today we're gonna read some crazy man not crazy man to me is a very good concept uh, you know this guy is really in a sense what they seem to be going for after reading issue one I'm starting at issue two just to annoy folks but for reading issue one you could tell he's really sane like he eats his way out of a monster that was gonna digest him <laughs> I guess other folks wouldn't get that savage and just start gnawing, clawing, and eating away at the monster. <laughs> but that's the subtext where, where he's really sane. He's going to a psychiatrist. He's, he's really sane in a sense. So we're, we're going to read some crazy man. Number two. <laughs> I'm betting this would never get copyright struck. But then I do have a lot of enemies. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of enemies who shouldn't be my enemy. They're just they're just mindless babies trying to copycat what everyone is doing because they don't know how to they don't know how to live life. That's the simplest way to put it. It doesn't matter how it sounds, it's true. Yeah. So like babies they copycat everyone, so they have to overlook at everyone, but they're ashamed of it, so they have to hide it. And then it creates then it creates anger irrationally. So it's a lot of folks like that who who seem to be extremely obsessed and say that's creeping. I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm just respecting my First Amendment right. I'm taking full advantage of it and I'm not bothering anyone. Yet. <laughs> if it bothers someone because your feelings hurt, then you're wrong. Your feelings aren't bigger than a constitution. That would make you wrong. So now let's read this comic book about Crazy Man. I'm surprised no one has scooped up the film rights for Crazy Man. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the, whoa, I went to a ghetto school and it's gonna come out, the first word, I don't even know what that is, fetid, what is fetid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what that is, I might not be alone. Smelling extremely unpleasant, fetid, uh, the fetid, steamy, heat hunkers, and like a solid thing. Filling your cramped lungs with marshmallow puff. Whoa, that's some stick. St that's some stick stench. <laughs> the smell of decay lends itself to the max of blood and bowel that reaches up from your aching center. Desperate, searing pain flashes through your wretched body. Danny Brody. You clearly, you have clearly been buried alive. <laughs> that seems to be some kind of metaphor about about society burying him and causing any of his PTSD or schizophrenic like symptoms or whatever. Let's see, a bone that fed it heat. It's like what fed it again. <laughs> <laughs> Someone must have had hooked on phonics and that was the word of the week. <laughs> wow. A bone above that fetid heat. A bell. I, that's it. Comic books are always interesting. Now, I thought it was a bone because someone has to physically write that. I wonder if they still do that or do they just type it now? Because <laughs> you have to read their handwriting. That's above that fetid heat. A bell, Huey gunship, races over the South American jungle tree chops. Inside, a dream chases Danny Brody like a rabbit dog. It chases him into what? It's like what is this? Is this like is this like David Lynch or something? It's like what 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 type of existential stuff is this? <laughs> Inside, a dream, Danny Brody. A dream chases Danny Brody like a rabid dog and chases him into consciousness. So he wakes up. <laughs> the dream was so overwhelming, he woke up. Danny, wake up. It's just a bad dream. He collapsed as we flew. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read this right. <laughs> I'm going to read it. A lot of folks may not know how to read it. I'm going to read it. Danny, wake up. It's just a bad dream. And then she goes and talks to someone else. He just collapsed as we flew over the jungle. Then he started jerking. Not that kind of jerking, but twisting from a bad dream. Almost like he and the jungle are connected somehow. 
Is he like a changeling, like Jim Morrison was talking about? Being one with the universe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These folks had lofty goals writing this stuff. Hey, Danny, wake up. Get away. It's just a bad dream. <laughs> so that's her talking. So she entered his dream. Kind of like when they say someone in a coma it does. If you go visit them in a hospital or something, <laughs> if you're talking, you start appearing in her dreams. <laughs> Get away. Don't shoot me again. I won't let you. <laughs> How you get shot the first time, you loser? <laughs> <laughs> I won't let you. Uh, then something snarls. Inside Danny Brody, there is a madness that drives him into violence. Every emotion and reaction is pushed to the ultimate limit. Some people can access this power to do incredible things. <laughs> it sounds like they're trying to stray to think about marketable shit and, and a traditional comic book. <laughs> now, inside, now inside a crazy man, he, get, he actually does have superpowers now. And the second issue were his superpowers, is his emotions, take some to a new limit. <laughs> Crazy man does it best. <laughs> hey, Danny, c calm. Uh, Danny, uh, calm. I guess he had it like she can't form words because he's because his emotional crazy power is so much. That look, I've never seen such raw hate. He's nuts. <laughs> Maybe I can wing the son of a. Oh, he's too fast. <laughs> no. You shot me before, didn't care that I was alive, when you shoveled dirt on my face, I go away. <laughs> Brad, he's throwing Brad overboard, yes, Lord, and then Brad is saying, yeah. <laughs> That's why they put Lord here. There's a lot of creepy religious nuts because there's no structure to it. There's a lot of creepy religious nuts who like bother folks. <laughs> so a lot of creative folks run into them. <laughs> and then, then what happened? Oh, they tased them. Yeah. <laughs> but why do they put the bubbles before saying they tased them? Shouldn't they put the? Shouldn't they put saying he, they tased them before that? I bet a lot of folks have difficulties reading comic books. You say, where do you start reading? Where you're looking at one of the panels? They're shooting me again. Didn't he just throw him off? Did he just throw someone off the plane? <laughs> She's not concerned about this guy he threw off the plane. <laughs> I'm sorry, Danny, but you. Are, why would she say that? Would she, would she look overboard to see if that if that dude is deceased? <laughs> I'm sorry, Danny, but you were... Ah, and then she shaved him, tasted him again, and it interrupted what she was saying. And now who's she talking to? Who is she talking to now? I couldn't act fast enough to save Brad. And Oh, oh, she, oh, she thinks the other guy's already slayed or is un, already unalived. <laughs> She's sure of it, so she don't even care. <laughs> I couldn't act fast enough to save Brad. And now... Danny's a murderer. No, help me. Well, Brad, you're alive. No, I'm slipping. I'm going to die. Grab me. Grab me. <laughs> uh, don't believe it. They try to write some realistic comic book bubbles where she's pulling them up and she's grunting. Uh, don't believe it. I don't believe it. Well, some more words I can't now pronounce. Beirut, Grenada, Iraq. I guess I, I could. <laughs> Ten years of combat, not a scratch. Then his freak, then this freak psych. Okay. <laughs> so this guy, this guy is talking about his military experience. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years of combat, not a scratch. Then this freak psycho throws me out of my own job. Where's my gun? Give me my gun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to see if I can do another dramatic reading for this. Ten years of combat, not a scratch. 
Then this freak psycho throws me out of my own chopper. Get my gun. <laughs> I don't care what Dr. Aker thinks. Brody is serifiable. <laughs> He's a freak. A menace. A dangerous lunatic who's, who's gonna kill you or us one day. Get away from him, you screwed up jerk. That's what the woman said. And then he says, it's over, Christine. He said it himself. He doesn't even want to live. <laughs> that's, that's funny. A lot of toxic folks do that. It's kind of like guys who would give women a lobotomy or something. They're like Toxic folks... They want to make someone else their pet because they're so empty on the inside. So they were trying to make decisions for others. <laughs> so when, if you're going to write something good, you always have to understand human nature and incorporate it. You have to understand that there's not a lot that goes out the wheelhouse everywhere. Like, especially with toxic folks. The reason they're toxic is because they're, they're weak. So that's always going to limit their palette of behavior. We're... It's not going to be much depth to them, but they would, they would, they would bask in being involved with surface things, <laughs> like maybe fancy outfits or whatever, or taking advantage of surface environments or something. <laughs> and then you can always write a good antagonist. <laughs> I'm going to start over from the top. It's over, Christine. He said it himself. He doesn't want to live, so I'm going to give him. So I'm going to give him what he wants. Oblivion. <laughs> Danny was having a nightmare. He certainly didn't mean to throw. Yes, he did. <laughs> Danny was having a nightmare. He certainly didn't mean to throw you out the chopper. He was disordered. No, he, <laughs> that always happened a lot, too. This is always toxic, folks. Who are making excuses for grown folks uh, that they can't make themselves uh. <laughs> disoriented? You knew the risks when you accepted this assignment. That's why we carry tasers, remember? Look, you want to quit, go home, fine. But I won't watch you kill a man who's helpless to control his actions. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like bureaucracy. <laughs> what happened? Oh, no. Oh, no. Did I do something? Oh, yes, Lord. It was, it was Brad. <laughs> so he remembers. It's like, motherfucker, you're... Ooh, I'm not supposed to use that, but who cares? I don't make content for kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jeddo, I'd say you lost control. Yes, you don't remember? He just said he remembered. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no. I didn't read the bubble right. Let me do it again. Instead of just letting the mistake stay, I want to correct this so I can get better. Ugh. What happened? Oh, no. Did I do something? Well, kiddo, I'd say you lost control. Yes. You don't remember? Oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> He's always saying, Lord, yes. Yes. It was his bread. It was bread. He's fine. He's fine. Are you okay? <laughs> That's why he's always saying Lord. Like it's a lot of it's a lot of creepy religious nuts where where they don't understand that God doesn't have anything to do with a church or something. It's like unofficial fan clubs. Some may be closer than others, <laughs> but they're thinking because they're really crazy. <laughs> so of course they're gonna pass their crazy on to someone to someone like Crazy Man in his comic book. So he's always saying Lord. These these toxic folks who misuse God, they're always gonna, they're always gonna think that they got a stamp of approval from the radio silence from God, and they're gonna have dumb beliefs like they can walk into church and don't burn up. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you see someone that crazy, there can be nothing good about them. That, that, that overrides everything. I and mean, if something looks good, they're just fooling you, or, or is you being too dumb to see to see to see the holes in obvious stuff? It's guaranteed. There's no way anyone that dumb with dumb beliefs would say, I'm, a, I'm not evil because I can get holy water on me. Man, it didn't burn me up. Yeah. 
Anyone, if someone's that stupid, that's a character issue. That's not just an isolated opinion. <laughs> so, so those folks are guaranteed crazy. There's no, there could be no redeeming factors. But anyway, she tries to calm Danny down and say, "Yes, yes, he's fine. Are you okay?" <laughs> I think there's a reason a lot of folks just go just write a script and go over the comic books. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually reading the bubbles. <laughs> it may be a lot to do with copyrights, and it's a lot to do. It's not. It's not easy to read. Fucking. It's not easy to read comic books. <laughs> and here's Danny again. I get these dreams, Chris. They come out of nowhere. Not all the time, you know. Just now and again, but. They scare me. <laughs> they, Chris, I'm so close to help, uh, to a real cure, huh? <laughs> Your dad said so, remember? Yes, Danny. But I remember it slightly different than you. She, she don't say that to Danny. She just said, yes, Danny. But she don't want to trigger him. <laughs> So she's overly cautious. <clears throat> so that's one good thing. How you know it's not a bottom barrel comic book? At least they're sticking to characterizations. <laughs> but I remember it's slightly different than you. <laughs> and then I guess this is her memory. No, you won't tell Danny anything. <laughs> that's what her father says. I guess that's her father. He's got a. He's he's got like one of those old. He's got one of those old people pipes when they were young. Yeah. <laughs> that you see on black and white stuff. <laughs> no, you won't tell Danny anything. He's dangerous enough as it is. I can't take a chance like that right now. Not with Dr. Muraturi so close. Dad, you owe it to Danny. You owe it to him. <laughs> Whoa, she sounds just like a fucking... I mean, she sounds like a two-year-old. I got enough, Christine. I'm sick. And tired of you second guessing my actions and decisions. Well, he just said decisions. I'm gonna read it again because I'm not Eve telling that serpent extra stuff like not even touching the true, not even touching the fruit. I'm better than that fictional character. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of you second guessing my decisions. When the time is right, I'll talk to Danny. <laughs> this is a very important thing. <laughs> These folks put a lot of effort in this comic book, and it's probably a lot of good stuff about society. It's almost good stuff. What was that earlier? <laughs> it's almost good stuff. It was a panel earlier. Like, her not wanting Danny to hear that she remembers it slightly different today. <laughs> but, re but reassuring him. That's almost like her being a pet to her dad, making her a pet. Were bad parents trigger soulless humans to just become monsters to where their bad parents compromise with them like the soulless human can't think ahead so and and it's a mindless thing that just does desperate stuff because someone because her friends may be doing something it may be like James mom let her watch this late movie I want to watch it and her soulless parents who just broke and made God send that soulless baby would tell them hey you got a test tomorrow you have to prepare. No, I want to watch it. And then they say, okay, you can watch 30 minutes of it. And no, I want to watch it. Okay, you can watch it all. But just make sure you go to sleep right after. <laughs> I say, if you don't want to talk to him because he knows more and he's sick of her second guessing, then you, then you stick with that. <laughs> You don't you don't compromise and say that when you're gonna do it when the time is right to to calm them down. That's 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 dumb. <laughs> okay, now this is her dad talking again. I brought him in from the code, and I uh uh dad uh Danny, and then Danny walks in on him. No, Danny, I have news. <laughs> that's what the dad said. You called me, sir. I'm not in trouble, am I? <laughs> We've located Dr. Muratori. He's Muratori! Woohoo! <laughs> That's what I wish I saw more unrestrained enthusiasm. I'll get it. Oops, sorry. And then he knocked over the table. <laughs> Danny, we'll get it later. 
let Danny leave it. <laughs> he keep he keep he keep trying to clean up the table. <laughs> that's almost a good. That's almost a get right. It's kind of hard to read in a comic book. <laughs> Let's Danny, Danny leave it. Let's talk about Doctor Xavier Murray Muratori. <laughs> but there's a problem. He's being guarded by their Siguri, a mystical and very secret cult of mercenaries, descended from a supposed secret tribe of South American priests. Xavier Muriati himself is world renowned for his research regarding the brain and how to control it. According to some news information, we've learned that Dr. Moratori is in Santos Christos. He was working for a company named Atoll Chemicals. We've made him an offer, and he's decided to come work for us. No, I'm going to read it again. We've made him an offer, and he decided to work for us. <laughs> He is, and then this is Danny thinking. So Danny is Dan. Wait, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I think they got a little too ambitious. <laughs> and then in green, it, it says he is currently working on the molecule process designed to allow the brain to adjust its own local metabolism. In other words, he might make you stop being crazy, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like very technical language. Yeah. <laughs> Are you promising a Danny a cure for his problem, Daddy? I'm promising that if he helps bring out Dr. Moratori, the doctor might be willing and able to help Danny. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're a swell guy, Dr. Anchor. <laughs> well, that's Danny. Yeah. I don't tr I don't trust you, Daddy. Why do you wait a minute? Why is that a thought bubble? Why is that a thought bubble? It, it, oh no! It shows them thinking. <laughs> so they're going, they're going, they're doing a lot of ambitious stuff in this comic book. <laughs> so she's thinking, I don't trust you, Daddy. And he's thinking, she's suspicious, always. Does. But Tal could create an army of insane fanatics just like Danny. <laughs> so he's manipulating him to use his super crazy powers. <laughs> to go do something and just told him some fake story. <laughs> he told him some fake. He told him some fake story about some secret tribe to play to play on his mental illness. It's a, this is a pretty brilliant fucking comic book. Yeah. <laughs> but Tal could create an army of insane fanatics just like Danny. <laughs> Danny's my bait. He does naturally what Mur Muratori is trying to create artificially. <laughs> <laughs> so now back in the present moment because that was Christine thinking back there we're we're at the temple you want to land negative pilot just hover over for a moment he got over being thrown out the plane pretty quickly you would think that would cause him trauma if he already had war if he already had combat if he already been in combat you would think that would create oh yeah this is a comic book yeah <laughs> Every time Christine Anchor activates, oh, she's got superpowers, <laughs> activates her cybernetic eye, false eye, she feels a flush of anger and a well intentioned attempt to save her, to save her life. Danny put out her eye. What the? <laughs> <laughs> so she's got cybernetic eye because he tried to make her, he tried to put her eye out. Is she crazy? <laughs> if, if someone put your eye out, chances are you might not want to be around them. <laughs> Scan it. With infrared now, that was right on the money. There's a massive complex under the shrine. Electrical generators, big ones. And it's definitely high tech. Switch into x-ray. Oh, so they I guess they have to put some comic book stuff in it. They don't... Oh, they want to write an episode of Twin Peaks that that folks have to read. Uh, <laughs> so so this so she randomly has a cybernetic eye. Yeah. <laughs> She's scanning the building with X ray, just like comic book folks do. <laughs> Switching to X ray, 
looks like under 100 people. It looks like it's under, looks like under 100 people in the shrine area. Hold it. Rocket launcher. Rocket launcher. Well, she's ordering a rocket launcher. <laughs> Who's ordering it? For <laughs> now, I'm confused. And it's locked on our exhaust engine. Oh no, she saw that. That that cybernetic guy is use is useful. <laughs> Evasion action. Too late. The rocket hit the helicopter. Lost our tail rotor. No way to steer. Hang on. I'm gonna try and bring us down in one piece. Well, this is gonna be horrible for Danny, isn't it? But save us. We're gonna crash. Help. <laughs> Shut up. You get in the back. I can't concentrate. Get out of get out get out of my way. <laughs> Whoa, Danny's trying to fly the plane. <laughs> it's like the Randy Rose situation. He looked kinda of like Randy Rose. <laughs> but Randy Rose Tried to try to force some coked out pilot to to, to land a plane and killed everyone on board. Yeah. <laughs> are they recreating that on the slide? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't touch that! You're gonna kill us, you lunatic! Yeah. Pull up! We're going down, so we need to pull up. <laughs> <laughs> We're going down too fast. Gotta crash. Gotta save us. Pull up. Pull on the stick. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. I broke it. <laughs> well, you broke the stick. <laughs> Chris, I gotta help her. My back feels broken. <laughs> Chris, are you... Okay, uh, and now they're speaking Spanish. Uh, let's see, do I speak Spanish or am I just faking that I don't speak Spanish and then just sound like I don't speak Spanish good or I'm gonna read the Spanish. It took, uh, this is 27 minutes. I've been reading this shit for 27 minutes now. Están, están, de los muertos. No bueno, levan a la muchacha con el directo del laboratorio. <laughs> yeah, this is someone who writes English and probably just took high school, high school Spanish. It's not the best Spanish. It's not the most in-depth Spanish. Este, este lavando el textbando. <laughs> We're, hey, Mister. Well, and then they. I love. I love the way that they scan these comic books. Then you see the advertisements. <laughs> so then on the next page of action, Danny, you killed me. You'll kill us all. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I guess he's having another dream <laughs> as he collapsed from the plane crash. <laughs> Wait! Don't go away, Chris, Brad, Doctor Anchor, please. Don't leave me alone. Ah. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a Mayan statue. A friend, Danny. <laughs> no, he says his full name. <laughs> a friend, Danny Brody. Where am I? Everything is so weird. <laughs> Can you help me? Send me back to my friends. <laughs> this is almost surreal. It's almost like what Steve Dicko was going for. And it was Doctor Strange. It was tri trippy Doctor Strange. But not really. Uh, you you would kind of have to reach for for stuff. <laughs> this, this is a very good... This is a very good comic book. <laughs> Please help me. Take this powder. <laughs> what is it? Drugs? I don't take drugs. Not ever. <laughs> What is it, drugs? I don't take drugs ever. Not bad drugs, Danny. <laughs> that's not that's not true. It's talk, it's talking to him. That's funny. That's so hilarious. <laughs> that's so hilarious. Sheesh. <laughs> not bad drugs, Danny. Good drugs. They will help cure your madness. Huh? It'll cure me. Great. I'll do it. <laughs> Wait. Wait, I can't feel my legs or my arms. 
I can't move. Help. What did you do? Ha 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 ha. Just start laughing at him. <laughs> I can't move. My throat is tight. My legs are lifeless. There's people here with me and someone behind me. If I could just speak. What he's saying. Fuzzy. Is this a dream or is it real? Hearken, Laurel followers. To the words of Tex Bondo, who speaks with the voice of the sacred goddess through Ludo Lu. Ludo Lu. <laughs> Tonight, our goddess will save, cure this poor man trapped in a wheelchair <laughs> all his life <laughs> because he believes in the virgin's power. So they drugged him up. Okay. So you know, Danny was was deluding with the statue. What really happened is they drugged him up and to scam some other folks. They're gonna have him pretend to be a cripple. <laughs> Can he help me to move? <laughs> now, my people, pray with me. Can he save me? <laughs> you have to have a really sharp, active mind to not get lost with this. With, with this. <laughs> Because it's actually satire. It's satire based on a lot of stuff that was going out, like 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 folks on TV who were who were pretending to heal folks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and asking and asking rednecks and and ghetto folks, basically folks who weren't available to go to San Francisco because Jim Jones already already pulled the plug on his cult. Yeah, <laughs> those folks were sending money. They were sending money to a whole bunch of folks in like the eighties and late eighties, <laughs> maybe maybe until the early nineties, until 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 folks started figuring out how to shame how to shame those a holes. <laughs> we were taking advantage of desperate, empty, soulless folks. <laughs> <laughs> Can he save me? Add your strength and your prayers to Tex Bondos. So we may heal this poor Brody and do the goddess's will. So, of course, it, it sounds a little strange. They had the plane crash, right? So they had the plane crash, but then they immediately went into whatever was going on in this in this compound because this compound shot the rocket to shoot them down. So it may fill the pacing as off the pacing as an off. This is good storytelling for. <laughs> So who was, whoever was on that plane, they were just gonna they were gonna make them a part of the show to scam folks. Or... <laughs> Virgin of Pilar, goddess of the earth, guide my hand and grant me the strength to heal this believer. Ouch! I felt something. It's a miracle. He's just dumb. He's as dumb as Paul <laughs> when Peter scammed him and gave him that eye, eye infection. <laughs> then he learned from Jesus how to cure her. <laughs> now my son stand. <laughs> I can move. <laughs> I can move. It's a miracle. Because <laughs> soulless things are just rubber stamp mindless things. They do the same things over and over again. Their tone of behavior is the same thing. It just it just comes through in different situations. But it's the same. It's it's the same dumb mindlessness and dumb thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty much the same thing. Come forth. Who would be our next lucky soul to be granted a new life? This is so great. I thought I'd never want. <laughs> Listen to text, people. I love this man. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Mr. Brodit, come with me. <laughs> okay, sure. Anything you like. Oh, look, police types. You must go with them. <laughs> and then I start beating them. <laughs> Uh, caliente, gringo. Easy, Caliente, Miguel. <laughs> Where? Why did you? Shut up, pig. We're talking to your friends. <laughs> <laughs> you work for Tal Chemical, don't you, butcher? And if you touch Chris, <laughs> oh, he's called the doctor butcher. You're going to have a snit, Mr. You're going to have a snit, Mr. Roman. 
Hmm, this entire installation was built by Tal for Dr. Moriturri to create the ultimate soldier. This is Project Crazy Man. Yeah. <laughs> you see, Mr. Aker, Dr. Moriturri is on the verge of perfecting a chemical that will allow an individual to totally control his internal chemical system as well as his glands making one fantastically strong soldier impervious to pain a super soldier in effect <laughs> uh, fortunately Dr. Murray Turi lacks the p proper amorality to test his results on humans that's where I come in I help him pass the rough parts <laughs> So, this Dr. Moratori keeps his nose clean and have this guy test humans in an illegal fashion with a cover of a religious of a, of a, of a religious sect. So, in a matter of moments, you'll be superhuman. Or maybe you'll be dead. I don't know. We we're just testing it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the last one. Here's the last one, sir. This green goes local. <laughs> just leave. Just hold him. I'll be right with you. I trust he inspired the natives to volunteer for my experiment. <laughs> Making the crippled man walk is a marvelous recruitment program. Program. You gotta understand. They're in a foreign country. Even if so, that does make sense. That covers that plot hole. <laughs> even if he would have been saying, "What well, you drugged me?" It wasn't just agreeing with him. That. They wouldn't understand what he was saying anyway. <laughs> this, this comic is brilliant. It may not be overtly brilliant, but it's brilliant. <laughs> Chris, they're drugging you. No! What, what, how would I get my dirt sticker? I would never get my completion certificate. You don't paralyze her. You're making a mistake. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Gringo ass. Gringo ass. Hands up. <laughs> I don't know. Some of this dialogue is strange. Gringo ass. Hands up. <laughs> I guess it. I guess he's saying it because he's, he's in the middle of an action by putting his gun up or something. Wait. Don't kill. No drugs. No drugs, no guns, no guns. <laughs> oh, whoa, he's using his super crazy power. <laughs> There's all crazy stuff that folks used to tell kids in school. <laughs> uh, no, no, no guns. <laughs> no goddamn guns. <laughs> <laughs> it really is like those nuts who try to take away the, the Second Amendment. Yeah, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's almost like it's almost like that crazy woman who was who was who was saying that they're not going to take her rights away, and she, and she was all heavy heavy set, and, and her eyes was looking like an animal fixed in on fixed on a kill. <laughs> it just kept repeating it, that no one controls her body. <laughs> this is pretty much. In that same vein of behavior. <laughs> this is a very well written comic book. Okay. <laughs> Ay! Miodros Barista Animal! <laughs> okay, he's. Danny is really screwing these folks up. He just scratched your eyes out and you can see the blood. Yeah! <laughs> Good lord! What is this madness? <laughs> I guess that's Dr. Moratori. He stepped in. Yeah, he stepped in as a casual 90s were. What the devil are you doing to my laboratory? At last, the master in this horror. You have corrupted Dr. Moratori's good work. I, well, I guess that's not him. <laughs> They're not explaining who this is. Yeah. Oh, I can't breathe. Ooh, he just lifts the guy over his, his fucking... I mean, he lifts the guy over his head like like wrestlers. They usually help each other. Yeah, this guy, <laughs> that dude has some strong crazy. I swear, I'll maim everyone in this room if you guys don't give me Dr. Moratori. Now! 
Get me Dr. Muraturi. <laughs> Danny. That man knows Dr. Muraturi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, really? Hey, I'm sorry. Get away. Oh, <laughs> Danny says, oh, really? Oh, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> oh, gosh. Look, Dr. Aker sent me. I'm Danny Brody. Aker sent you? Dr. Lieutenant Will. Wait a minute. Dr. Aker, uh, help, this lettering is bad. <laughs> I can't even read what that is. LR, do you mean doctor? Or, no, that's a print issue. That's an issue with the print. I was going to say this comic book they scanned this out of may have faded or something, but it looks like it's a print in error. Dr. William Aker, the D looks like an L. <laughs> Dr. William Anker, what does that cloak and dagger fool want with me? <laughs> he wants your help. Work for him? Never. Never. <laughs> but we're here to take him to... We're here to take you to him now. I don't want to leave. I have everything I want here. Will and test subjects? Unlimited budget? <laughs> Will and test subjects? You're either a monster or a fool. It's a, it's a, wait a minute. They flew over their property. So, <laughs> so they have a system, apparently, where if you fly over their property, you can't know what they're doing there. So now you're a test subject. <laughs> so they did that to themselves. That's their fault. <laughs> usually with toxic folks. <laughs> you turn any situation a life lesson because usually with toxic folks... They're going to always think it's not their fault, but it's their fault. It's like they're the ones who flew over there. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently they're doing shady stuff where you're just going to be a test subject. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> what they're doing is so secret. You're either a monster or a fool. These poor subjects believe this is a religion here. Your pawn, Tex Bondo, is their messiah. Of course those people are willing... They've never seen technology. They believe the crap Bondo's hand in them. <laughs> and who is this person? Wait a minute. I don't believe... I, I, I skipped the panel. <laughs> so it's one straight down. I don't believe you. Doc, we gotta haul ass out of here now. <laughs> Let me cut through all the bull. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't believe who's saying I don't believe you. Is that Christine? Because right now this is that pilot guy and crazy man. <laughs> Let me cut through all the bull. Doctor Aker promises you the opportunity of a lifetime. We can provide a person who will accelerate a breakthrough in your research. And who is this person? <laughs> He'd need to be insane. Helm, Danny Broden. <laughs> I've seen him do things no normal sane human could do and survive. He could be the key to all your attempts to unlock a human being's potential. Danny is insane, aren't you, Danny? <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to be insane. I just want to be normal. That's why I came here. You've just got to help me. I'll do anything. Please, Dr. Muratori. Please help me. You. With, I have to look at I have to look at this shit. I have to look at the time. I've been reading this 44 minutes. When I was a kid, I think this is why I just looked at the pictures. I do stuff efficiently. I don't have time to be reading this stuff. But I guess that's what kids used to do. <laughs> it would take time to read these comic books. Literally, the only comic book I ever read, I read The Death of Superman. After I read that, I started going back to read the older ones, <laughs> which were a couple of months ago, to read the whole story. And that's the only comic book I've ever read. <laughs> and then after that, 
<laughs> I was I was interested in that version of Superman, and I read The Man of Steel. <laughs> so I guess I've read two comic books. I've never read any other comic books. <laughs> I, 